Classifying Living Organisms Today we're going to learn about how living organisms are classified into different kingdoms. Robert Harding Whittaker proposed the Five Kingdom Classification. The Five Kingdom Classification are Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. First, we're going to talk about Kingdom Monera. Kingdom Monera, you have to remember that Bacteria belongs to Kingdom Monera. Now, whatever characteristics bacteria possess, those these will be the characteristics of Kingdom Monera. Bacteria are unicellular organisms, and they do not have true nucleus and organelles. There are only ribosomes found in their cells. They have a cell wall which is made up of peptidoglycan that is um, protein and amino acids. The cell wall is made up of protein and amino acids and it's called as peptidoglycan. We can also call it murine. Now there are some bacteria which are uh, um, which can photosynthesize but unlike plants you know like plants obtain water and carbon dioxide so these bacteria they absorb hydrogen sulfide and they release sulfur in place of oxygen but there are some bacteria which possess the ability to make their own food but not all of the kingdom monera photosynthesize you see this is the structure of a bacterial cell it has a cell wall made up of murine, it has a plasma membrane inside cytoplasm and they do not have true nucleus and this region is called nucleoid. Here single chromosomal DNA is present. They also have the plasmids which are extra chromosomal materials and that's why bacteria are used in genetic engineering. They also have capsule in order to survive unfavorable conditions. And this flagella is used for swimming. And these pili are points of attachment. It, these pili are used to adhere on different surfaces. Now, Kingdom Monera are basically prokaryotes. Pro means before and karyote means nucleus. So these are those organisms which are present or found before nucleus. They do not have a true nucleus and they are smaller unicellular organisms. Examples we have bacteria and archaea and uh, instead of nucleus they have nucleoid and single DNA molecule is present. They don't have membrane bound organelles. Only ribosomes are found and those ribosomes are smaller than those found in the eukaryotes. Eukaryotes means, you means true, karyote means nucleus. So these are those organisms which have true nucleus. Examples, we have plants and animals. They can be unicellular or multicellular. They have a nucleus and DNA is packaged into multiple chromosomes. And they have all those membrane-bound organelles like chloroplast, mitochondria, Golgi operators, endoplasmic reticulum, etc. Now, in five kingdom classification, besides kingdom Monera, the rest of the rest of organisms are all eukaryotes. Only kingdom Monera is a prokaryote, so it means bacteria is only a prokaryote. The rest of all organisms are eukaryotes, like fungi, plants, animals, and protists. Now, second kingdom is kingdom Protista. They are eukaryotic. They are mostly unicellular and some. Simple multicellular organisms, they can be autotrophic or heterotrophic, asexual or sexual reproduction are present in them. Examples, we have amoeba molds. Now, kingdom protists, there are some protists which have the 
which are like plants, they can photosynthesize, like we have an example of Euglena chlamydomonas. And then there are some protists, which are animal-like, like they, um, they are heterotrophic organisms. They obtain their nutrition from different sources rather than preparing them for themselves. So we have an example of amoeba, paramecium. So they have like animal-like characteristics. And Euglena and chlamydomonas have plant-like characteristics. They are mostly unicellular, some are multicellular as well. Now, third is kingdom fungi. Fungi, like protists are eukaryotes, fungi are also eukaryotes, right? And they are multicellular, they are unicellular as well, like yeast is a fungi. Yeast is a fungus and uh, it's, it's unicellular. But then you see mushrooms, they are multicellular. So they can be unicellular, can be multicellular. They are heterotrophic, like fungi do not have chloroplast, chlorophyll, so they cannot prepare their food. They obtain their food from different sources, like they, they will either live as a parasite or as a saprophyte. And they can be microscopic as well as macroscopic. You see, example of mushrooms, macroscopic. Fungi needs damp, shady, moist places to live, reproduce. So whenever you find moisture and shade, you will find fungi over there. Fungal spores will be there. Also in your lawn, um, areas which are under a tree, which do not receive sunlight, they are like shady and moist places. So you will see mushrooms growing over there. Now fourth kingdom is kingdom planting. So plants are included in the kingdom. So Robert Whittaker has classified all the or all the plants or all those organisms which can photosynthesize and prepare their own food, and they have uh, they are eukaryotic, so they put it in the kingdom plantae. So we have uh, seedless plants, we have seed bearing plants. In seedless plants, we have bryophytes and teratophytes and in seed bearing plants we have gymnosperms and angiosperms now these are bryophytes these are teratophytes so bryophyte needs moisture and they don't have true root stems and leaves same in the case of ter teratophytes they're called ferns and these are angiosperms and gymnosperms. The difference between angio and gymnosperm is that in angiosperm, seeds are enclosed within the ovary. Fruit is basically ovary. And gymnosperm, the seeds are naked. You will not find them enclosed within the ovary. They are exposed. So that's those uh, plants whose trees are whose seeds are exposed. They are not enclosed in the ovary. They are called as gymnosperms. Angiosperms are further divided into monocotyledons and dicotyledon plants. Now, monocotyledon, dicotyledon plants, the difference is in monocot, mono means one, cotyledon means seed leaves. So they have one cotyledon and dicots have two cotyledons. We have an example of like gram, um, beans, these are all dicotyledons and um, these, these are dicotyledons. Monocotyledon is like rice, corn. Their floral parts are arranged in three. You see, monocotyledons, their floral parts, parts are arranged in three. And dicots, their floral parts are arranged in four or five. Then you will also find difference in the venation. Um, in monocotyledon, there is parallel venation present, and in dicotyledon, net-like venation is present. Pollen grains have one pore or furrow, and there, in dicots, pollen grains have three pores or furrows. Vascular bundles are scattered in monocotyledons, whereas in um, vascular bundles are arranged in the form of a ring in dicotyledon. This is the structure of a stem, so you will find differences in the stem as well. The vascular bundles are different. See, in the monocots, vascular bundles are scattered, whereas in the stem, they are arranged in the form of a ring. So these are few differences between monocotyledons and dicotyledons. And monocotyledons and dicotyledons are angiospermic plants. Okay, then the last kingdom we have 
is kingdom animals or animalia. So they are heterotrophic organisms. They obtain their nourishment from different sources. They cannot prepare their own food. They are eukaryotic. They lack cell wall and they show locomotion. So all the animals come in this kingdom. Vertebrates, invertebrates, all the organisms, right? So now this is a flow chart, a sort of uh, um, an easy way to remember. So organisms are divided into prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes, one kingdom comes, that is Monera. And eukaryotes, they are further divided into unicellular and multicellular. Unicellular, we have protest, kingdom protesta, right? Remember Euglena, Chlamydomonas, Amoeba. And multicellular organisms are further divided into organisms which do which have cell wall and which lack cell wall. So those which have cell wall are further divided into two types. Phototrophic, so plants will come, and heterotrophic fungi comes. Fungi and plants both possess cell wall. The difference is that plants are autotrophic because of the presence of chloroplast, whereas fungi are heterotrophic, they lack chlorophyll. Uh, chloroplast and uh, without cell walls so only one kingdom comes that is animalia so animalia do not have a cell wall but they are multicellular and eukaryotic organisms right and fungi are heterotrophic they have a cell wall and they are multicellular and they are eukaryotic and plantae are polytrophic and um, they have a cell wall they're multicellular and eukaryotic Protista are unicellular and eukaryotic, and Monera are prokaryotic organisms. Now this table shows all the differences. So you can actually differentiate these five kingdoms on the basis of cell type, cell organization, cell wall, nutritional class, and mode of nutrition. So you see only Kingdom Monera is prokaryote, the rest of the organisms are all eukaryotes. Kingdom Monera and Protista are unicellular, the rest fungi can be unicellular, some are unicellular, most are multicellular, but plants and animals both are multicellular. Then cell wall is only present in the Monera, in few protists which have animal like character uh, sorry, plant like characteristics like Euglena and Chlamydomonas, they have cell wall. Uh, those organisms which have animals like, which shows animal like characteristics, they lack cell wall. But fungi it is present and it's called chitin. And present in plants made up of cellulose and absent in animalia. Then monera can be phototrophic, can be heterotrophic, can be chemoautotrophic, right? Protist are heterotrophic and phototrophic. Fungi all are heterotrophic. Plantae autotrophic, animalia heterotrophic and because of their nutritional class their mode of nutrition is absorptive in monera, absorptive or ingestive in plantae, some absorb to make their own food and some ingest so the animals like characteristics those organisms which shows animal like characteristics uh, are, have ingestive mode of nutrition. Fungi absorptive Plantae also absorptive and animalia ingestive. So that's it. I hope you have learned a lot about five kingdom classification. Thank you.